Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm looking at a brand new locomotive from Sonic Models. I just love opening up models from a manufacturer that I've never tried before because you just don't know what you're going to get. You don't know what the design philosophy of that manufacturer is going to be. You don't know what their decoration is typically like. You don't know what their mechanisms are like. You don't know anything. And today, that is very much the situation. Today's loco is made by Sonic Models, who I believe have never released a 00 scale locomotive before. I have seen N scale locomotives from them listed, whether those have been released or not, I'm not sure. So this may not be their first ever loco, but it's certainly the first one I've ever tried. And I think it's the first one in 00 scale. So the locomotive is this. It is the Great Central a5 tank engine by Sonic Models and this is exclusively available at rails this is currently the only place you can get it and the price for these is £149.95 so yeah that's kind of a lot of money for a tank engine but this is a large tank engine a very large one in fact so on first glance the value here seems to be really quite good definitely better than other rails exclusives and I think that's probably because rails didn't necessarily commission this they are just the retailer that is selling them so perhaps the markup isn't as high on this as it would be on products that rails have commissioned I don't know but either way the price here seems to be very reasonable but is it reasonable because the model is good value or is it reasonable because the model is cheaply made I have no idea but today we're going to get this out and we're going to find out so stay tuned let's take our first look so there is the packaging and it's got quite an interesting color scheme as you can see with the purple and orange bands and the packaging style is very similar to lots of other manufacturers these days with the solid box so that's good yeah i will say looking online at the photos of these products they look fantastic particularly the green ones the great central greens yeah the livery application on these looks great so i'm looking forward to seeing it in person let me show you the end of the box then. So the one I went for is S4101-01. It is the 00 Great Central slash LNER A5 slash 1 462T. Interesting wheel configuration for a tank loco. And of course, I did go for the Great Central Green number 373. No way it was going to be anything other than that one for me because I love my pre-grouping locomotives. Right, let me show you the end of the box then, because there's a brief history on the class here. So pause and read that if you'd like to. I will give you a bit of history on the A5s later on. But for now, brand new pre-grouping locomotive. Contradiction in terms, yes, but you know what I mean. Let's pull this out and let's have a look. Ooh, this one's been on the cards for a long time. And finally, here it is. Okay, so we've got some sort of paperwork. Let's have a look at this. All right, GCR slash LNER A5. So it does need some running in. It says one hour unloaded at medium speed in each direction. Okay, it can handle second radius curves or wider. That's pretty good. DCC chip, apparently it's got an 18 pin socket in the coal bunker and a small speaker is already fitted. That seems quite impressive for the price of the loco. There's how to remove the body shell. It looks like three screws. And there is the chassis, a fairly standard setup really, decoder in the coal bunker, good looking motor there with a flywheel and a sort of a drive shaft going to the gear tower there. And then a bit about accessories as well. So that shows you where those go, that's pretty good. And what have we got on the back here? Uh, kind of an exploded diagram, I suppose, with a list of the general parts. It doesn't go into masses of detail, but it should help you if you need to get some replacement parts. So there we go, brief but effective. And of course we do have prototype history on the box, so no worries. Okay, ready? So we've got foam. Oh yeah, there it is. Plenty of foam actually. So yeah, very good packaging from Sonic Models then. All right, let's open this up. Well, let's pull out the blister pack. Anything else in the box? I doubt it. Always double check. Nope. All right. All right, well, it feels pretty heavy, I have to say, and uh, it should do really, because it's a large tank engine. And I can see we've got accessories on the bottom, so let's open it up that way and see if we can get those first. 
Let's see what we get. All right, so we've got a NEM pocket and uh, no NEM coupling in there, so that's confusing. <laughs> Where's that? We do have brake rigging, we do have lamps that you can fit yourself, presumably, that's good. You've got a screw link coupling, not a movable one though, they are just moulded in place, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's a little bit of a, a cheaper feature than some, I suppose. Although we have got fireman's tools here on a sprue. That's a nice feature, it's not every day you get those. So, yeah, interesting, some sort of detail. I don't know if we've actually got a NEM coupling for one end. Um, yeah, no, we do. <laughs> They're both fitted. So I don't know why we've got another pocket in the accessories bag. Anyway, it's just a trifle, isn't it? We need to look at the logo. So here we go. Opening it up at the back. <laughs> it's like uh, vacuum sealed in here. No, not really. Okay. Oh, wow. Now that is a surprise. Look at that gorgeous finish. 150 quid and it's got a beautiful, beautiful satin finish. Now that is a quality bit of paintwork right there. Look at that. I like this already. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's pull this out. Ready? Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, it's heavy. Great, yeah, it's got some really good weight to it, this has. And the reason being the die-cast running plate. Yeah, that's a really thick, chunky running plate as well. So there's quite a lot of weight in there. Feels like the rest of the body is just made of plastic, but by no means does it have a plasticky finish. Yeah, the finish on this, like I say, is fantastic. And on first glance, the decoration and the quality of the decoration seems to be incredibly high. Yeah, I would say this is well worth the money. Very, very impressive. So we'll have a much closer look at this model in just a second. First of all, though, here's a little bit of background on the prototype in real life. The A5 was actually only known as such under the LNER. It began life as the Great Central Class 9N, as was the pre-grouping classification. Designed by John G. Robinson, the class was introduced in 1911, when the first of 44 was built at Gorton Works for suburban passenger services. These tank engines were notable as having 462 or Pacific wheel configurations, a wheel configuration seen all the time on tender locos, but not so much on tank engines. They ran on two inside cylinders, which gave them that interesting simplified look from the outside, as well as Stevenson's valve gear and superheaters. Although the A5 was a pre-grouping design, further examples were ordered by the LNER in 1925, which led to the building of the final 13 members of the class. Unfortunately though, every single A5 was withdrawn and scrapped by the early 1960s, with no survivors under preservation. So there it is, up close and personal for you, the brand new Great Central A5, or 9N, from Sonic Models. And what is the verdict? Well, I think this is great. Yeah, overall this is a really, really nicely detailed model, and a well-built model at that. For the price, it is actually better than I was expecting. This isn't a particularly cheap model, yet it was relatively inexpensive to buy, which is really impressive and good to see. Let's start taking a closer look at this then. We'll start by looking at the decoration, which goes down even to the wheels. Look at the lining on the wheels here. They look particularly good. The chassis and the running plate, these are all lined as well. And of course, the thing you're all wanting to see is the boiler. Not only have we got a fantastic finish on the boiler and all of the parts of the loco as well. Yeah, look at that great satin finish. But we've got some incredibly precise lining too. This could rival the best of manufacturers, really. Yeah, the lining is top quality. The print work, though, I don't think is quite as good as some. I say that because there is a Backman Great Central Green Loco that I've got. And if I show you the Great Central lettering and the crest from that Loco, you can see it looks a lot better. I think the outline is a lot finer, the colours are richer. If we go back to the Sonic version, 
yeah, it looks fine, don't get me wrong, but the colours are more washed out and the quality of the printing isn't quite as high. Same sort of thing goes with the number plate as well, but by no means do they look bad, they just don't look quite as good as Backman's. And I suppose with that I should talk about the very small number of issues I've spotted with this Loco. The number of complaints here is very small and the severity of the complaints is very mild, but I'm going to talk about them. So the handrails, we've got some of them made of metal and some of them made of plastic, which leads to a slightly unharmonious look, particularly when we've got plastic and metal handrails right next to each other. Yeah, the plastic ones look like they've just been kind of moulded in that colour. They don't quite match the metal ones. And one or two of the metal ones aren't perfectly formed either. You can see there's a bit of a kink on the one around the smoke box. Small issue, but it might bother some people. Also, the finish on some of the die casting isn't fantastic. Yeah, you can see it doesn't look dreadfully smooth. There are little nicks out of it. Not the highest quality die casting in the world. And some of the plastic moulding isn't the best either. Again, this is only noticeable when you really start looking. It's not a huge issue, but some of these wheels don't look fantastic either. And also these coal guards are particularly flimsy. And this was evident on some of the sample photos from very early on. So I feel like the manufacturer should have known about this, but they have not corrected it. Actually, mine isn't as bad. I've seen photos of these looking a lot worse, but yeah, they are quite flimsy. They are inclined to warp. Again, that's not the greatest. On the grand scheme of things, though, these are relatively minor issues, but I do want to talk about them, and if, if these are things that are going to bother you, then you should bear them in mind. But on the whole, this is a great looking model. It's very well refined and it's got some lovely details as we shall see. So let's start with the front buffer beam, which as you can see has got some decoration on it already. We've got the number on there. Pre-fitted is the vacuum pipe. Nice to see that from the factory. And we have these very high shine chrome buffers, which uh, I think look pretty good. Yeah, they might be a little garish for some, but they are also sprung, which is really cool to see. I like that. The area below the boiler and the smoke box is also particularly detailed. We've got the little fine builder's plate there, as well as a couple of little separately fitted valves. I think those aren't made of plastic, but they are quite nicely produced. Yeah, the, the finish on those is really good. Same with the smoke box, really. You've got the finely painted hinges and the smoke box dart. The top part of it, the circular piece, is separately fitted but the bottom part is just part of the moulding for some reason, which is a little bit strange, but no, it's fair enough. Up on top of the boiler, the dome is a separately fitted part, not a perfectly fitting piece, there is quite a gap around it, but this sort of lip that is formed does seem to be prototypical on some of the photos, so no issue there. And you have got this air gap underneath the boiler, and over on the other side you can just about see the silver painted reverser rod, which is good to see. We've also got real separately fitted metal safety valves, not just plastic, and the finish on those is absolutely marvellous. That's relatively common to see, but also the whistle is metal as well, and that's a little bit rarer, so very, very good going there. I love to see that. The front windows of the cab are also glazed, and the frames are painted too, which looks fantastic. And of course, the boiler has various handrails and pipework on it too. And also, the top of the tanks are pretty well detailed. You've got the water filler caps, which look separately fitted, and then you've got the little holders for the various tools, which were provided with the model. Around the back, you've got this very interesting arched design, which I suppose really sets the A5 apart from quite a lot of other tank engines. And here you've got more separately fitted lamp brackets, a slightly different buffer design. Yeah, these are circular buffers, still sprung though. And then you've got the rear coupling here, which is actually not that free to pivot. It's just kind of a standard coupling. It's not on a kinematic or anything. And given the length of this locomotive, given its large wheelbase, Hopefully that won't become a problem. Yeah, hopefully that's not going to pull coaches and wagons off the track. We'll find out. Right, I haven't talked about the cab yet, so let's take a look inside. It's a very large and spacious cab, and the controls are quite far from the openings, so it's a bit hard to see the detail, but I'll do my best. Yeah, there is detail. We've got painted pipework, a separately fitted regulator by the looks of it, a really, really decent cab, including the cream inside walls as well. Yeah, it looks fantastic. They haven't painted the gauges or anything, but you're really going to struggle to get a look at those from the outside. 
So overall, a beautifully detailed model. It's got all of the features you could possibly ask for and a little bit more. The quality of the finish is absolutely tremendous. The quality of the decoration I think is all right. The lining and such is particularly good. Print work perhaps not as good as some manufacturers, but it's certainly not terrible by any means. And the build quality, like I say, thanks to the die casting, is absolutely fine. And there's certainly no glue visible holding any of the details on. Thanks to the die cast running plate, the weight is really good as well. It comes in at 338 grams, which is actually more than a Hornby 8F with its tender. Very large freight locomotive there from Hornby, but this thing is heavier. This actually weighs about the same as a new Class 20 from Backman, which is a fairly heavy diesel locomotive. So the weight is really good. It ought to be a good hauler on the track, but I don't know anything about the mechanism or the performance of these locos yet. So I think that is what needs to be investigated next. So join me for that. Let's get it down onto the track. Let's see how this runs. So there it is, the Sonic A5 down onto the track. And I love this thing. It's just got a piece of that pre-grouping uniqueness to it that was kind of lost on later locomotives. And obviously the livery makes it look gorgeous. Anyway, the first performance test has already been filmed and I'll show you how that went in just a second. After that, I went on and looked at the mechanism and that's what we're gonna talk about first of all. So overall, the mechanism is a good quality mechanism. Yeah, there is nothing really that I would fault in terms of the quality. There are one or two strange design choices though that make accessing and servicing this a little bit of a headache and they are design choices that you just don't see more experienced manufacturers making. So any criticism I make in this section is really just constructive criticism to try and make sure that the next model from Sonic, if there is one, is even better. But first of all, we have the rear pony, which is really quite well sprung, not too heavily sprung, and there's also plenty of smooth movement on that as well. The front bogey, though, has a much more powerful spring to it, and it's much stiffer as well. It's not that free to move around. Now this doesn't cause any problems or anything, but the stiff springing does mean that the front bogey is perhaps taking quite a lot of the loco's weight. It's not as great a puller as I was expecting it to be. Only the loco wheels have pickups on them. You can't really see them because they're down out of the way. Uh, so you have just got three wheels per rail with pickups on them. Although the center axle does have double pickups, so you should get some good reliability there. The base keeper plate is removable with screws, plus one under the coupling, which I didn't know about. But yeah, once you undo those, the base comes off. Although it is hardwired, there are no spring-loaded contacts, which is fair enough. I mean, it's good and reliable, but it's also very, very annoying to replace the base keeper plate. So cleaning your pickups, oiling the bearings is a little bit of a nightmare. Spring-loaded contacts here would have been much, much better. It does, however, have proper turned metal bearings on each of the driving axles, which is a really good quality feature. I like that. And you've got just a single axle driving the driving wheels. So that's good and simple, not too overcomplicated. The body removal is not much fun either. You can get to the screws all right, but there's no clearance on the chassis for the rear buffer shafts, which means to get the body off, you've got to kind of force the chassis past those buffer shafts, which is not very pleasant. And it's particularly difficult to put the body back on. Again, you've got to force it past those buffers. So a little bit of clearance built into the chassis there would have been much better. Again, I don't know why that wasn't built into the model from the start. That issue should have been apparent during the sampling phase. Anyway, here is the chassis, which is made of metal. It's die cast, but it is quite bare bones. There's no lights or anything like that. You do have the DCC socket, as promised, underneath the coal bunker, and there is a speaker fitted under there as well. This is the motor. I'm not sure if it's a three or a five pole motor, but it certainly isn't a very substantial motor. There would have been room in this loco really for a more beefy substantial motor. And when you see the performance test, you'll notice there isn't a great deal of torque in this loco. So a more powerful motor would have done this loco proud as well. The gauging comes in, well, each axle was different. I got 14.3, 14.4 and 14.5. Now, on average, that puts this bang on the standard at 14.4, but I would rather that each axle was closer to the standard. A little bit of slop there, nothing too bad. 
So yeah, the mechanism is good. It ticks all of the boxes. If it was designed a little bit better, it would be a bit more convenient to access and service and chip, but overall, no major complaints. So let me jump back in time and let me show you how that first performance test went. Okay, moment of truth time then. I've been quite impressed by the Loco's looks so far. Let's see if I can say the same of the Loco's performance. So, big question, does the Loco work? Let's set it into forwards direction and let's find out. Here we go, a little bit of juice. Yep, it sure does work. And that was a really smooth start. To say this hasn't been running yet, to say this is literally its first ever run, that looks great. Mm, very nice. Oh yeah. A little bit on the noisy side, I would say. It's not the quietest in the world, but again, it hasn't run in yet, so that could quieten down. Let's have a look and see what it's like at medium speed. See what the gearing's like. Try it at 50. That seems quite sensible. And it's not a freight loco after all. It's for suburban passenger services, so yeah, that looks great. And already, I'm not even trying to crawl with it, but uh, it's doing some good crawling as well. So I would say the mechanism is going to be decent. You guys will know for sure. I've not looked at it myself yet. Um, seems to be a little bit inconsistent at that speed. Seems to be hitting a bit of a sticky spot. Let's try it forwards. No, generally, I'd say that's good and smooth. I wonder what the torque is like. Again, this is only just out of the box performance. Let's turn it up with my finger there. 50%. Yeah, it's got some grunt. Doesn't sound very happy about it, but it could still turn its wheel, which is good. Okay, final little test before we run this in then. What's the crawl like? I think it's going to be all right. Wow. Wow, it certainly is. Yeah, it's reasonably smooth as well. That's not a coggy performance. That's legitimately a good crawl to say it's literally been running for about 30 seconds. Accelerate smoothly. Sure it can. Wow. This is becoming more and more impressive for the money. Great. Right. Lots of bogeys and ponies and things on this. So let's have a look and see how it handles curves. Here goes. Here we go. Around the first curve, second radius, yeah, a little bit of a slowdown there on the second radius, but no derailment, so that's good. Yeah, and off it goes, ready to run in. So you know what? For a reasonably priced loco, the level of detail is good, the quality is good, the decoration is good, and now I can say that the performance is good. So it's checking out pretty well. I'm now going to let this run 30 minutes forwards, another 30 in the opposite direction, and then we'll come back, I'll find some coaches and see how it looks with some of those, and we'll finish off this review. But no, I'm, I'm enjoying this loco. There is nothing about this that is putting me off, there's nothing I'm really disappointed in. Yeah, it's turned into a really, really lovely loco. So, I'll keep this running, I'll see you very shortly. Okay, there we go, that is running in complete. And yeah, that went fairly well, actually. It is still slowing down on the second radius curves, so not amazing torque there. Could be the gauging issue too, I suppose. Um, but it doesn't do it on third or fourth radius, so that's not too bad. The pulling power was not as high as I expected it to be. It came in at 0.36 newtons, which is less than the 8F I described earlier on, and much less than the Backman Class 20. I think it's because of that stiff spring underneath this front bogey. When you lift the wheels, you can really feel the resistance. You're really having to lift a lot more than just the weight of the wheels here. You're having to compress that spring as well, which is a very hard spring, like I say. So I think that front bogey is taking a lot more of the weight off the driving wheels than it should be doing. Um, how's the rear one? Yeah, the rear one, again, it's not as bad. The spring is definitely lighter on that one. But again, it's going to be pushing down onto the rails and taking weight off the drivers. Not a huge problem. And because this Loco doesn't have the greatest torque, maybe it is better that the driving wheels don't have such a load on them. But uh, yeah, something to consider. So I've set this up with just five LNER coaches. I've not gone too crazy because it doesn't have that much torque and it's only a suburban passenger loco, so the full rake of Gresleys would probably be a bit unnecessary. 
But before we go and couple, let's have a look and see what the performance is like now that the Loco's running. Uh, I've got to say, it still seems really nice and smooth. You really can't fault that. Uh, it's not too noisy, really. Yeah, it's not the quietest in the world, but it doesn't sound unhealthy or anything, so I don't think that's much of a problem. Uh, it's just gone over the dead zone on the express points there, and it's not cut out. So the pickups, even though there's not a huge number of pickups, in fact, only half of the wheels on the model pick up power, uh, it doesn't seem to affect anything. And the extra pickup on the center driving wheel there is uh, probably helping to maintain continuity as well. So there you go. Let's have a look at the crawl, which was great to start with, but let's just check that it still is. Here we go. I'm just going to ease this up gently. Yeah, it kicks in at low power, that's for sure. It really is a marvelous crawl. And I'll accelerate it. Yeah, so the motor's good in that sense. It's really good and controlled. It just doesn't have that much power to it, and I can sort of show you that. If I set this at, let's say, about 40, you can see that the wheels barely turn at all. And then they speed up a lot when you relinquish your finger. Um, at higher speeds, at, say, 50, it's less noticeable. But I would have said 50 is a little bit quick for some suburban passenger routes. I prefer 40, really, on this Loco, and that's where the, the power, or the lack thereof, becomes a bit more apparent. But on DCC, that might be different. Anyway, let's go and try a coupling. Let's check the couplings are at the right height. So I'm really expecting to have great control over this one. Look at that. I can probably go even slower. Yeah, look at that. It's just ridiculous. The crawl is marvellous. Really, really good. And we can take it off a little bit quicker, I suppose. There we go. Yeah, I'm sure the real thing wouldn't be as good as that. It's marvellous. So there it goes. Yeah, looking absolutely gorgeous. The l &E teaks here, probably not 100% correct for this. Well, obviously not, because they're Gresley teaks, aren't they? But Still not too bad looking. We've got my only other, I think, I always say this and people say, oh no, you've got this and that. I think this is my only other great central loco. This is the D11 from Backman, the one I showed you earlier on that had the slightly better decoration. And then on the inside line, I've got another locomotive designed by Robinson. This is the ROD flavor of it. But I think Robinson did the 04, didn't he, on the great central. So there it goes with a little bit of a freight train. Right, let's observe how the new A5 performs with a load. All right, here we go. Let's see how it gets on over those curves now, now that it's got a load. So yeah, very noticeable slowing down there. The reason for it is not entirely clear, but I think there's probably quite a lot going on there. You've got the fact that the motor isn't dreadfully powerful. Then you've got the fact that the gauging of the driving axles is a little bit iffy and you've also got that very stiff movement on that front bogey and obviously the tighter the curve the more front bogey has to move so the more force is required and it just seems to slow the loco down now people always try and blame my setup when a loco slows down on these curves and yeah you can think what you want obviously but it isn't a setup Plenty of locos can do tests like this without slowing down on those curves. I'm pretty confident when I say that this loco doesn't have great torque. But I also say that it, this only seems to happen on the second radius curves. On anything broader than that, it does seem to be okay. So I would say most of the people who are going to be buying this are probably not going to be running this on second radius train set curves. I'm sure there will be some, but for most that's probably not the case. Again, add DCC into the mix, you're probably going to get more torque there as well because you've got the decoder powering the motor directly. You haven't got loads of track in between the controller and the motor, so your mileage may vary there as well. But enough of that, what do I think of this thing? Well, I love it. I absolutely love it. I love that it's a great central loco. I love the livery. I love the design of it. It is just so different from the later, more refined locos that we'd get in the later part of the 20th century. I just absolutely love it. And it's been really, really nicely put together. The livery and the finish just look absolutely awesome. And I'm actually really impressed with what Sonic models have been able to do with this. 
And let's hope they do more. Let's hope they announce another loco now that this one has dropped. Let's hope that it's another pre-grouping loco or something like that. Because I'd love to see what else they can do. And they're only going to get better. If this is how they start, where are they going to go from here? What will a few improvements to the quality and the livery bring? Hopefully it will bring a wonderful loco or two. So yes please, more from Sonic Models. It's a great first loco and a very, very welcome addition to my collection here. Let's have some ratings then for the brand new Sonic Models Class A5. And as you can see, yeah, the ratings look pretty good here. The level of detail I've given four and a half. Yeah, this one's great. The finish in particular is gorgeous. Love the satin finish. The lining looks great. The metal parts such as the buffers, whistles, safety valves, they all look fantastic. You've got a fully painted cab, which looks great. Sprung buffers. The only thing I would knock it down for, the only thing stopping this getting a full five star, is that some of the printed detail doesn't look quite as good as Backman's up close. Can't give this five star when there are other locos that are decorated slightly better, but that is a very, very minor complaint. Performance then, I've given four star. Generally, it is a really nice, smooth performance. The crawl is really good, can't fault that. Doesn't have great torque though, it does seem to slow down on curves, whether that's because of the motor or the slight gauging issue, I'm not sure, I would guess the motor. On analogue, that's the way it is. On DCC, the mileage may vary, but it's certainly not too bad. And on third radius curves, it doesn't seem to slow down so much, it's mainly second. But hey, it was rated second, so it should be able to handle them a little bit better. The pulling power, 23 coaches or 0.36 newtons. That's a little bit less than it should be based on its weight. The locos that it weighs more than, the Hornby 8F for instance, are actually better haulers than this. I think that's because there's too heavy a spring on that front bogey, which is taking some of the locos valuable weight. I think it can still haul a good number of coaches as you can see, but it's something to bear in mind. The mechanism similarly is really good. It's got all of the top quality features, such as the proper bearings on the driving axles, plenty of pickups, flywheel, pre-fitted speaker, etc., etc. It's just not that easy to access. There's a few issues in the design, a few design choices, which make it a little bit fiddly to disassemble for servicing or DCC fitting. And also that motor does seem a little bit puny. It's not the most powerful in the world, but these are minor. The mechanism generally is pretty good. The quality similarly is really, really decent. The finish, like I say, is good. The decoration is good. The build quality is high. No visible glue or anything like that. We've got plenty of metal on it as well. Nice die cast chassis. Just the quality of the die casting, not the greatest in the world, so I can't give it five star. Now some of the plastic handrails contrast with the metal ones and it doesn't look quite right because of that. Again, that's minor, but I can't give it five star there. Overall then, with a price of £149.95, I think this is a good value locomotive. I don't think it's a marvellous bargain or anything like that, but it's certainly good value. If some of the issues I mentioned were not present, then it would definitely be a 5 star. Price is definitely not bad. So that is 8.03 out of 10 overall, that's a grade of B. Let's pop it into the logbook where it is third place above the Rapido Hunslet 16 inch and below the Dapol Class 59. Yeah, if you fancy this, if you like your pre-grouping locos, I can highly recommend it. Well folks, that will just about do it for another review. This was a pleasant surprise. Like I said at the start, I had no idea what to expect. This is a new manufacturer to me never tried any of their products before. And this one was a really pleasant surprise. They're obviously a very, very capable manufacturer. They've obviously got some good ideas on how models should be made and such, and that's clear right from the get-go. So very excited to see what else Sonic Models can do. And uh, I can highly recommend this to you. So if you wanna pick one up, give it a go. You don't just have to go with the Great Central Green. There's the l colors as well, as well as some BR ones, I think. So check them out if you're interested and uh, show some support to Sonic Models and hopefully this will be a good experience for them as it has been for us to the point where they will bring another loco to the market. Anyway, that's all I have to say for now. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you very, very soon with another video. All right, cheers folks, take care.